great video on the heavy duty oil stabilizer. Now, how to use it? I mentioned that you're going to use it at 20% to the volume. So let's break that down, what that exactly means. We replace 20% of the lubricant oil that's being used. So if an engine normally uses 10 liters of oil, Pro One engine uses 8 liters of its oil, and then we add 2 liters of the Pro One heavy duty oil stabilizer. So out of 10, you're taking 2 out, going to add 8 of your base oil, and then to make up the 10, you have 2 more, and you add the Pro One heavy duty oil stabilizer and it's added each time to every oil change. You measure the effectiveness through an oil analysis. So you do want to take an oil analysis when you're getting uh, close to your normal change interval so you can see the before and after. This is very, very important. Okay. So with the heavy duty stabilizer, the wear metals you're going to see are greatly reduced. Now I have an analysis I'm going to show you in just a minute and it will show the oil remaining usable, we're going to usually reduce wear metals by 50%. And so we're going to extend the time between these oil changes and you're going to observe the, the, uh, the reduction in noise and vibration. These are some of the benefits. So let's take a look at what those results look like. Now this particular engine in the vehicle that it was in is severe duty. It's off-road. It's in a concrete application or a lime and dust and just tearing up this engine. So look at the numbers that's happening here. I'm going to explain this to you in just a moment. But the following data was obtained from a construction company and was notified that they had to take immediate action through this oil analysis test on their Cummins engine due to high levels of iron and chrome and lead and aluminum. Uh, aluminum and soot. They had a lot of wear that was there. So after adding the Pro One heavy duty stabilizer, the wear metals dramatically decreased, saving this engine and giving them some added performance. So let's do uh, a little bit of highlighting here. The copper, which is the CU, this is where bushing and bearings are. So what we did is we took that from 130 parts, per, 135 parts per million, the ppm, to 20 parts per million. Uh, so that's that's what happened here, from here to here. This Fe is in iron, and then so this is cylinders and rings and uh, crankshafts. We took this one from 431 parts per million to 68 parts per million. And then the aluminum, is. this is in pistons and bearings and pumps. We took that from 9 parts per million down to 2. All right, so what is the actual reduction? That's 85% reduction in copper, 84% reduction in iron, and 77% reduction in aluminum. These, I will tell you, is not necessarily normal, but we do this in extreme heavy-duty severe applications. So again, copper, iron, chrome, and aluminum. And when you look at these, now what we have here is a three, but we're taking these and reducing them dramatically. This is what they were before on a severe duty application. And then we reduced to these very low numbers. And yes, the account was very, very surprised in its results and the engine continues to operate. 